Okay, once you're ready to begin making your animation clips for VR chat, uh, what you want to do is usually you want to make a duplicate of your main character asset, not work on the main itself. I've heard this actually causes problems if you do. So you duplicate it by pressing Control D. You select it in the uh, hierarchy, Control D. And then what you can do is you can actually basically just disable that asset. You don't want to just hide it. You want to go to the inspector and uncheck the object so that it completely vanishes. Then you go to the duplicate, and that's the one you're going to actually going to create the clips from. Uh, all of its all of its uh, blend shapes or shape keys have the same names, so its connections into various connectors it's going to create will mesh right into essentially your mesh for the one you're actually going to use to, ex to uh, publish. So what we're going to do is we're going to select the body geometry, which is where my blend shapes live, and they live right under skin mesh renderer, and then blend shapes. And we see a list of them here. Now, if you've actually purchased yours, you may have a much longer list and much more interesting uh, set of phonemes or visemes, depending on whatever you want to call them. And we're just about ready to go. So in order to create these clips, we basically go to animation tab, which you can, if you don't already have it, you can go to window, animation, add animation, and it'll plop it out as a window and you can just drag the tab down and drop it down here on the bottom and then you first need to press create and then assign a name for your first animation clip and save and then you can record so once you start recording you usually get something like this happen sometimes happens most of the time as far as I can tell what it'll do is it'll stick into this really weird pose and that pose is usually caused by the fact that it's a humanoid uh, skeletal structure uh, you know within the program and that's basically caused by its muscle settings which is a little odd to me uh, but apparently this is required by VR chat uh, and as you can see, it's doing a few things you don't really want. For example, if your um, blend shapes are for the face, having the mouth open like this will be recorded even though that's coming from the joint structure. That could be a problem. Now, one thing I've actually found to fix this problem is to first remove the jaw from the list of joints that are being controlled by the rig. And then, actually, let me just show you how to do that really quick. So I'm going to stop recording since I didn't do anything anyway. Go back to project, go to my rig, and I'll go to configure. And I'll go into head, and I go down to the jaw here. And then I'm going to click, and I'm going to search for none. Choose none. And now that jaw is completely disconnected. Second thing we're going to do is while I still have that jaw selected in here, I'm going to check the values that are on it. Now, right now, the value for the rotation is 121.51, even though it should be, it was zero in Blender. Uh, because of the conversion that it applies to things, it sort of reposes everything. Now, let me just show you where that muscles and settings comes from really quick. Let me apply this first though. I'll apply this to lock in my changes to the jaw and then go to muscles and settings. And you see, that's the pose it jumps into when you go to animation. And that's being controlled by everything here. Now, if you want to, you can come over here and fool around with the settings and try to put things back in the default position, but it's kind of painful. As you can see, it's just doing all kinds of funny things with your rig. Although this is a good way to test the deformation of your rig, see how well you did when it comes to uh, weight painting. So that's where it's coming from. Now, hopefully it resets when you go back to mapping. Yes, it does. And hopefully it's also reset when you go back. And it is. Now, of course, sometimes if it's not, there are things you can do. You could just while you're in configure, you can go to pose and set it for enforced T pose and then 
apply that and it'll restore the TPOs within your work area as well. Uh, and sometimes it'll just pop back on its own, but sometimes it does not. But this is a way to force to restore it before you publish, because if it isn't, if it is in that weird muscle pose, when you try to publish, it will not let you publish or it'll give you errors. So you want to make sure that is above ground plane, like so in T pose when you publish. Okay. Now, one thing I did find to work around our little animation problem there is to sort of disable the program's ability to move the rig by breaking breaking the hip or the cog, basically cause an error. And it shouldn't interfere with creating clips because we're just deforming the mesh. It will throw a couple of errors at you as long as it doesn't stop you from recording, you're fine. You just need to make sure you fix it before you try to publish. So I can simply select my mesh, come on to normal, go into record, find my blend shape that I'm animating, scrub it all the way to 100, it'll create the keyframes for it. Now, don't forget, you don't need to just create static frames. If you want to create your own kinds of transitions or mix blend shapes, you can do that just to customize your individual deformations. So right now I've got a little simple smile on him. Okay, so once you're done with it, you can move on to the next one. Go to the drop down, say create new clip, and choose your next one. So if mine's gonna be, let's say I'll say it's going to be shock. Okay, and so then we start recording again, and notice it's staying in T-pose, the mouth is staying in its default position, nothing's moving, and that's because I've temporarily disabled the rig, but I can still access all of the blend shapes. So let's see, I can do shock, and I can give them a little bit of a bulging eye on that one too. And stop. Okay, so now I want to go back to my project and I can set all these to zero again. <laughs> so when I go back to my project, you'll see that I actually have my shot clip and my smile clip. So no problem creating those clips. And it even created a couple of controllers or one a new controller for the rig I was working on. And now I can go back into my rig. So I'm going to select Don Way or at least this duplicate of Donway. And I can go back into configure and I can restore his hip, or in my case, the cog. So I can restore the rig to full function functionality. I go to done. When I come back, he's still in T-pose. And that way I can just make all my connections and then just publish him and without having to worry about whether the rig is going to be in the right position and pose and everything like when I'm ready to, to publish out. Once you're done recording all of your animation clips, don't forget that you're going to hide your duplicate, for that your animation duplicate, and you're going to restore your main avatar that you're actually going to publish. Because you're, you don't want to publish the duplicate, you only want to publish the main one. The duplicates there is pretty much just there to help you create animation clips.